changes. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the channel. It is Wednesday, December 2nd, 2020, a new month, actually yesterday, but I didn't get around to doing a December 1st video. So today I wanted to cover two things. First off, let's get it out of the way immediately. There was an eBay glitch this morning on manage payments. It said there was an error sending out your payment that you needed to click the button and fix your uh, bank account information through manage payments. It turns out that that was not correct and it was a glitch. Um, I actually didn't even see the message until like noontime and I had to head out and do a few errands. So I was gonna call or have eBay call me back or call concierge when I got in. By the time I got back a couple hours later, it was already resolved and they had resent the payment. I uh, don't know if that put any delay in it getting to my bank. We'll find out tomorrow. But just so you know, it should have resolved itself. Show of uh, hands in the comment section, did everyone get that message or everyone that did get that message end up getting a follow-up second message that it was corrected and everything looks good. Uh, if you're watching this a day or two later, let me know if it hits your bank. Should be good to go. Don't worry about the eBay glitch and error too much. Now, the point of this video as we get into a new month that I just mentioned is to prepare you for the end of the month. It's great that we're in December and a lot of people buying stuff online for Christmas. Continue on with everything we've talked about, listing and running sales and promoted and promotions. But we also need to be ready for two things at the end of the year. Number one is getting all of your accounting and tax numbers ready for January. The last thing you want to do is wait until the end of March or April to be filing taxes or extensions if you can help it. Um, I don't file my taxes in January or February for two reasons. One, I have a lot of stuff to do with taxes. But two, because... I don't give the government money like quarterly. I give them federal quarterly taxes because it's re required. But when it comes time to owing them whatever the balance is for the following year in April, I wait to the last minute. Why? They're earning interest on my money. Why not use my money for myself January, February, March, and then give them whatever that balance is in April. Now, January, February, and March, you owe that quarterly payment for April. If you're paying enough, you really shouldn't have a big balance depending on how you're doing it. Talk to a CPA as always. So that's number one. Number two is your cost of goods versus inventory remaining moving forward. So this is pretty uh, new to a lot of people, but if you've ever been in business or you understand this or have an accounting background, you'll know the difference. Cost of goods sold through the year is what the items actually cost you that you moved out the door and sold. So if I buy this webcam for $20 and I sell it for $80, my cost of goods sold was $20. When I buy this from a garage sale or wherever I get it from and I put it on the shelf and it's ready to sell, I listed it and it's all set up, it's $20 in inventory. That's what's currently in my inventory, 20 bucks that I paid for it. All of a sudden somebody comes along and they buy for $80, it packs up, it ships out the door, it's now $20 cost of goods sold. The IRS is going to ask you both numbers on your tax forms. They want to know what that cost of goods sold was throughout the entire year. Well, it's 20. If it's still sitting on the shelf, it is not a cost of goods sold. It is a cost of inventory, a remaining in inventory in hand cost. And they will ask you that number in a box. And that box is actually called the inventory moving forward. So if at the end of the year you didn't sell this because you listed it too high and it's still sitting there, your inventory moving forward at the end of the year after December 31st would be $20 in inventory if it didn't move. And so those are the numbers that you have to get together. Now I'm going to start with number two first. With the um, cost of inventory and inventory moving forward versus cost of goods sold, you have to either track your items individually line by line, which I buy way too many items to really do that. You guys know that I pretty much run off of a cost averaging, which is fine. But if you track your items and you like to see your inventory and you like to see you know, the items you have left and the items you've bought and the items you've sold, you can certainly do that even with bulk purchases. There's ways to do it through you know, programs. At the very least, you need a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet or a Google Sheets, completely free. Um, you can get those Google Sheets on any web browser. Just Google it and go right to Google Sheets. You don't have to have Excel anymore, which downloads to your computer. Google Sheets accessible just through your email. Perfect, that's great. You can also use QuickBooks and GoDaddy. Very popular among everyone. I've used QuickBooks for the better part of probably eight, nine, 10 years. I don't know. I've had it as long as I've had my LLC, which I found out last night, I'll be renewing for the ninth year. So I've had QuickBooks that long. Um, 
anywhere from 150 to 250 on up in price per year, depending on what versions you use. GoDaddy's like 125 to 150. So, you know, some, some expense involved in having those. And they will track your sales and expenses and profits and cost of goods. What they don't do is they don't track inventory. And so that's something you have to decide if you're gonna track on a spreadsheet or uh, if you missed the video last night, which I'll link below, I did a live video with my reseller Genie, which is an all-in-one inventory tracking and uh, sales profit cost of goods. So not only does it track your numbers, how much you've sold, how much you paid for it, all the expenses and labels, et cetera, it also tracks what you have in stock and how much you paid for all that. And when you sell it, it moves it over to the other side. If you missed the video, check it out. I did it with Paul and Faith. They're the creators of My Reseller Genius Fantastic. You'll see it. I'll link it very first down there. So please do go check it out and uh, consider using that. But either way, the uh, point of this is you need to have a system in place, whatever it is you choose to do, that's going to give you those two numbers, cost of goods sold and inventory remaining at the end of the year moving forward to 2021. You wanna have that immediately. You need to be tracking that every day, every week, every month, because you don't wanna to have to go in December and now all of a sudden it's January 1st and you're like, oh my God, I've gotta track 12 months of what I bought and sold for all of 2020. That's just silly, right? Especially this year, it's been crazy. That's the last thing on your mind. You gotta keep up with these numbers. Something like My Reseller Genie or anything really uh, you know, comparable, which there's nothing really comparable to what they do all in one, but at the bare minimum, a spreadsheet will keep you in line through the year and you can import it into My Reseller Genie later. Whatever you have to do. Okay, so number two, which is actually number one on my list, is the accounting sales fees, profits, net, gross, all that sort of good stuff. Again, a program will do it. QuickBooks has done it for me for many years. GoDaddy, a lot of you use, I understand that. But you need to get yourself lined up. Trust me, they're worth their weight in gold. Uh, CPAs, I'm not a licensed one. I can't give you financial advice. The reason is because I don't know all of your situations. Some people are married, some people aren't. Some people have kids, some people have houses and mortgage interest. Some people have credit cards, some people don't. Some people run as LLCs or sole props. Some people run as S-Corps. There's a million different variables for your tax situation and that's why somebody who's taken the classes like a CPA can look at it and know your situation after going over it with you. They can run for a good qualified e-commerce CPA a few hundred dollars for a year. You know, I've seen people charge thousands, I've seen people charge two or 300 bucks. So they're worth their weight in gold, because trust me, most CPAs, if you're paying three, four, 500 bucks, can probably find you that much in deductions or savings on your taxes alone. So why not give them the chance, know that they're gonna get you the most deductions as long as you find a good one, and make sure that you're not doing anything bad that you shouldn't be doing and screwing up your taxes. The last people you wanna screw with are the IRS. I will skirt the lines on websites, on platforms, on all these different things. I'll do everything I can to make money, uh, you know, legally and morally. I'll do everything I can walking these lines to do as much as I possibly can for myself and for the business that makes sense and that is not going to hurt anyone, you know, again, legally or morally. But when it comes to the IRS, I won't even discuss it. Like I send them whatever they ask me for and pay whatever they ask me to pay and we're done. When it comes to something like eBay or Amazon and they're giving me a hard time about, oh, this listing or that listing, get out, like come on, guys, like you're a $12 billion company, I'm gonna list this with X and as long as it's within your policy and I can't get kicked off, like we're good. But the IRS, I'm like, yes, what, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? The last people you wanna tick off, trust me. Uh, it takes like three hours just to get the guy on the phone that says it takes three hours to get the guy on the phone. Don't even ask, it's a problem. Okay, so what you need to do and what you need to have, what's the list? Casey, what all do I need to present to a CPA? Perfect, so there's four, yeah, four major things. Three that I always talk about before that you really need to have for the CPA when you call one up and find one. Now, I work with a couple. Um, I have a good friend in Sarasota. Uh, we haven't talked or hung out, you know, obviously COVID and everything, but uh, beyond that, uh, Paul DeLeo, who's here in Florida down in Sarasota, he did skip town for a little while, but he's uh, a license. He works for companies, large, large billion dollar companies. Uh, great guy, very knowledgeable. Um, but Paul isn't really involved in like the social media aspect world. A little bit here and there he chimes in and I appreciate all the stuff that he's done for me. Uh, Mark II is the one who is a CPA who's very, very active. You guys may know him as not my dad's CPA or not your dad's CPA. I say my, but not your dad's CPA on Instagram and social media and YouTube now. Uh, he's settled into a new house. 
congratulations to Mark on that. And he's somebody I recommend highly. I'll put his information below. He has a tax academy for resellers. He specializes in e-commerce. He is an Amazon seller. He knows what is going on and what to do. If you follow him, not your dad's CPA on Instagram, he puts up tips and tricks all the time. So definitely recommend him. I'll link his academy below. There's a discount code I'll put in there too. You can use from me. It'll save you a little money if you decide to use him as your CPA. He will help you out and he's awesome and it's very, very affordable, especially with the discount code. So do consider that if you need a CPA for 2021 to file your 2020 taxes or not, he won't file them, but he'll help you get them together through that academy so you can file them. He is not local to every state, but he is certified so he can help you no matter where you live. Okay, so I think I covered Mark. Um, what four things should you give to Mark or have ready for him at the time of presentation? So you definitely wanna have a gross sales number across all platforms. So you're gonna need to gather up any 1099s you get. You're gonna need to gather up any of your sales reports, QuickBooks, My Reseller Genie, GoDaddy, your spreadsheets, Google Sheets, whatever you have for the total sales. And when we say gross sales, that includes everything that was collected. That means the sale and the transaction. If you sell this camera for $70 plus 10 shipping, it is an $80 sale. Your gross sale was $80. It is not $70, it's 80. If it went through PayPal or eBay and they collected a $2 sales tax, it's 82. Now on PayPal, they weren't separating it. On managed payments, on a 1099, it should be separated and we'll have to wait and see on those 1099s. Obviously no one's got a managed payment 1099 yet that I know of. We'll have to wait and see how that comes out. But for those of you that are experienced, you know what I mean. In the meantime, this is $80 and if the sales tax was included in the transaction and appears on the 1099, it will be 82. If it doesn't appear on the 1099, you should be okay reporting this as gross 80. I will cover that with Mark in a private chat and let you guys know for sure on the updates. So gross sales, number one, you have to have that. Number two is all of your purchases, cost of goods sold and inventory remaining, which means you need the receipts for all of the items you have purchased, be it a Goodwill trip or if you hand wrote your garage sale purchases, you have to have a record of everything you purchased. If you're claiming 10,000 in cost of goods sold and 3,000 remaining in inventory, you better have receipts for $13,000. You bought 13 grand, 3,000 still sitting on the shelf and 10,000 of it went out the door at whatever sale, hopefully at 40, 50, 60 grand you better have the receipts to back that up. And you better know both of those numbers, which is why you need a system in place to tell you what those numbers are. Otherwise, you're gonna be taking a bunch of receipts and trying to handwrite this for days and days and days and days, depending on how much you sell, in January, February, and March. Please keep in mind, you need to have these numbers and the receipts to back it up. The IRS specifically asked, do you have proof of 13 grand? And you say yes, and they say, is it written? And you better say yes, because if you say no, it's a flag that you could be audited. Anything can get you audited, it's random, but that will certainly go against you. So that's number two, receipts of cost of goods and inventory remaining moving forward. Okay, number three is your other expenses and the receipts to back them up. If you're going to claim that you bought a light kit for $200 that's used for your photography for your business, you better have the receipt for $200. If you bought and paid for 10 packs of bubble wrap this year at 20 bucks a piece, $200 worth of bubble wrap, have the receipts, whether it's digital. If it's digital, that's fine. Credit cards and debit card statements will suffice for proof that you purchased these items as long as it's purchased in your name anything or in your business name. So any kind of receipts that you can provide to back up all the expenses and a list of all those expenses, light kits, bubble wrap. The IRS has about 10 different categories that apply to resellers. Now there's hundreds of different categories of expenses. Typically I see the same eight to 10 that most resellers use, which is shipping supplies. There's uh, other supplies like office supplies, ink pens, papers, tape, stuff like that. There is equipment. That means buying stuff that you keep, a new office chair, a desk, a computer, a light kit, things like that. Those three, obviously we have the receipt for cost of goods and inventory. We have receipt for travel, lodging, any kind of like, did you go to eBay open? Did you fly on a plane? Not this year we didn't. Did you go to a hotel for a conference? Did you pay for any of that? Uh, number five would be training, or excuse me, number six would be training. Uh, so did you take an online course? Did you buy an online 
online course or book? Did you go to a conference and pay for a ticket to the conference? Um, did you have to attend a mechanic school? Did you go to ITT and it cost you money? Did you go to a college class to learn something? All of those are training and expenses that you can deduct. So that is definitely another category that you wanna keep in mind. Number seven is around town local parking, tolls, driving, um, gas mileage, any of the travel that you do around locally that you wanna keep the receipts for, definitely deductible if you're doing them on your business trips, not driving to the store for ice cream, driving to the store to thrift store to thrift and buy goods and get uh, inventory is absolutely deductible. Also, the last one would be meals and entertainment and other. Uh, only do that if you were at a business meal, business entertainment, things like that. Again, talk to the CPA. Make sure you have all of those receipts, other expenses. That's number three that you need to present to your accountant, and those are the three big ones. And then let's talk about number four. Okay, number four I call the other paperwork, and that's everything else that will appear on taxes that you need to account for. So taxes always ask about health insurance that you paid, whether you got it through your company, if you work for someone, or if you have it on your own. They ask for things like mortgage interest. Do you own a house that you pay interest on? Um, your record of sales tax that you've paid your state. You should be paying through you know, the website or whatever your state offers, and you should have a receipt for every time you pay sales tax. That number is something that you can report on your taxes in most states. You should have a record of state income tax. If your state, Florida doesn't have it, but if your state pays income tax and you have a record of that, you should have a record of how many kids do you have? Did you get married? Um, any of those financial you know, college credits, any of those outside the business finances, those are things you'll want a copy of and a receipt of. If you have this stack of receipts for your inventory, receipts for other goods, and a list of all these other expenses and things that you have, and you neatly pack these up into a box and you bring them to your CPA, they will, and if you've already totaled them, even better yet, they will be able to hammer out your taxes in that day in a few hours versus months running around town trying to you know, gather all this stuff up. And this is why having a system makes it easy, especially one that totals it up. So uh, definitely consider you know, using Mark as your CPA below or at least investing in Reseller Genie so that you can have all these totals and numbers in one place. As far as the receipts go, you don't have to give them to your CPA. He's not looking for that. You need to have them in a box so that when you give the totals and everything is done, if in the event of an audit, they say, hey, because the IRS usually in an audit, and you know this isn't guaranteed, but they don't come to you and say, uh, let me see every single thing you've got. They're going to go, well, looks like you spent 4000 on shipping supplies. Show us all the shipping supply uh, receipts. And that could be something that they could ask for. I'm not saying that is, but that, that's just an example. And you're going to have to dig out the shipping supply receipts. So you want to have them organized in somewhere that in the event that you get audited, I literally have some plain boxes that are like, you know, I don't know, 10 by 10 by 12 or something. And in there, it, the, the boxes are labeled 2010, 2011, 2012. I literally have a stack in the closet. I've showed you guys three or four of them um, with our house being packed up. I don't know where they are right now. I think one or two are under my desk. Anyways, they're labeled 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. And um, inside is all the receipts from every thrift store, every pawn shop, everything I've ever bought, handwritten receipts, uh, purchases offline. When I go online and make inventory purchases, like I bought a lot off eBay a couple months ago, I think we spent like $225 on it. I printed out the eBay purchase receipt and I put that into the box. Uh, we bought you know, lots off of you guys directly through Instagram and Facebook. Every time I did that and I paid via PayPal, I printed the PayPal invoice out. So that's how you would keep track of those sort of things. And, uh, and those receipts are all in those boxes and they're taped up. The IRS can go back seven years as far as I understand, which would put them at 2013, 2014. Um, so my 2010, 2011, 2012 boxes probably can go away. I'm too nervous to get rid of them because I feel like they'll call me and go, we extended it a year. So uh, we'll see how long I hang on to them. But eventually I'll, I'll get rid of them once they're eight, nine, 10 years old. So uh, I'll feel better about those years, whoop, out the door. Um, but in the meantime, everything 2013, 2014 and newer, you better keep. And by seven years, it's that tax year you're paying. So 2020 is what we will be paying. 20. 13 is how far back they could go as far as I'm aware. So um, I'll be keeping 2012 just to be safe. If I have 10, 11 in there, they're gone. Fine, I get rid of them. Um, but that's it. That's your four items to give to your CPA to prepare for the end of the year. Also, knowing what we know now, try to liquidate and sell off as much inventory as you can so that you don't have as much inventory moving forward into the following year. You wanna liquidate and close those books out as best you can, and you wanna bring in as much possible cash as humanly uh, available to you by January 1st. So please work on that, do it, and make sure that it works 
um, in your favor. So you have less and less inventory and you can start off the year fresh, uh, which is also a great reason to have, you know, some kind of CPA ready, some kind of program ready, my reseller genie ready, something that you can start fresh, learn how to use it now. And on January 1st, just bang it out, get everything uploaded and, and ready to roll. So hopefully uh, you guys appreciate this little list. Hopefully it gets your mind wrapped around what you need so you can start organizing and preparing for the end of the year. Good luck with your sales in the next four weeks. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, once the first of the year comes, 2021, I'm going to be doing videos not in front of this sign and this YouTube thing as often. I'm going to be out in town, out and around doing things and giving you guys some more entertainment. So uh, thanks as always. Make sure you hit that like button. I appreciate all of you that do hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel for more videos. I'll keep you guys up to date. And thank you as always for watching. Good night.